Hello, welcome to Archer Software, and let's talk about one of the basic process in software development, gathering validating requirements and drafting accurate software requirement specification, or SRS. Before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Vyacheslav. I am a senior project manager in Archer Software. I have more than seven years of experience in IT project manager management and uh, 14 years in IT in general, including hands-on software development. Any software will be written from scratch or based on existing pieces of software. For instance, in case we are expanding its functionality, is aimed at solving some business problem. This is why the core task of a requirement specification is to create a shared understanding for all parties of stakeholders, business owners, product managers, project managers, developers, and testers. It's important to remember also that a shared document doesn't equal to a shared understanding. A document should be a clear and as understandable as possible for, for all parties. Sometimes getting the requirements process and writing the specification could be quite some time consuming. You'll have to decide and find a balance between getting too detailed, but possibly wasting available time from one side and from another side, quickly make an efficient description that could be put into action right away. I remember we had a client who had a quite good SRS and we made an estimation according it. For client estimation seemed quite big and he left us. In, seven, in eight months, he appeared again with a much more detailed SRS and asked us to make an estimation once again. No doubt that now with more detailed SRS, our estimation go bigger. But during this eight months, he spent more uh, detail for more detailed specification, we could actually develop this software, getting more details in parallel. He just wasted his time. And a good example to learn, isn't it? It's important to look at software requirements specification document from a perspective of a business owner, no matter who is writing it. Because any business owner has the following needs. Define and analyze all the details of a project implementation. Consider all the risks that may happen. Draw up an implementation schedule. Determine a budget for all stages. Okay, so what hints do we get uh, when we start writing SRS? First of all, we need a good template for requirement document, which, which uh, should have at least a cover page, heading section, essential, essential guidelines uh, for the content in each section and brief explanation of the version change management system used to control change it, uh, changes made to the document. Archer software is very experienced in this and has a good template that could be in uh, that has been challenged by many projects and validating through time. A good template will be a good looking skeleton for your software requirement specification. We will look later at what possible template may consist of. The second is the hierarchical structure of the document. Uh, we will give an example of it on the next slide. The third may come as a surprise, but many requirements documents lack a comprehensive requirement identification system. Requirement identifiers could be used as a requirement themselves, especially when it's a big specification or a specification uh, for development iteration, next iteration over existed ones. When we come up with the need to create identifiers, for each requirement. For example, it could be REQ011A, a combination of digits and letters. 
Finally, like most spoken languages, English is a full of words that have multiple definitions, each uh, with, uh, which evoke subtle shades of meanings. This is a great thing when it comes to a self-explanation, but can lead to a confusion and disagreement when it comes to a specifying and interpreting requirements. Especially important not to use synonymous. For instance, if you started to use term equities, please do not use shares. Otherwise, it will be unclear if you mean different or the same. As promised before, here you have a possible hierarchical structure of the document. It started with the introduction, then purpose part. This purpose part may consist of next points. Define project's scope, describe the value uh, it will deliver, show who will use the software, detail how it will help with uh, intended users' jobs. Then we have a scope, intended use, in, uh, intended audience, uh, definitions, overall description, user needs, assumption and dependencies, and of course, system features and requirements. For these features and requirements, it could be system features, functional requirements, external interface requirements, and non-functional requirements. There are specific characteristics that every software requirement specification should have. By reviewing this list and comparing it to your uh, SRS, you can ensure that it will be useful documents for all stakeholders. So characteristics are next. The first one, explicit. An SRS document should be easy to understand. Nothing should be vague, so there are no misunderstandings between stakeholders. Then measurable. The requirements in your SRS document need to be measurable, so the finished product can be validated and verified against the specifications. Complete, as an SRS document should have enough information for your development team to finish the product and for the testers to validate that uh, the product means the user's needs without bugs. Available, the requirements should fit the reality of the current environment, including the budget, timeline, and technology. They shouldn't depend on upcoming technological breakthroughs. Flexible, because th uh, things could change in the working environment. Your SRS document should be flexible enough to allow updates. Don't end, add redundant information to multiple sections that have to be updated with each changes. Verifiable. Everyone on the development team should have access to the document so they can reference as frequently as necessary. Requirements need to be precise so that the team members do not have to ask for more details. They should be uh, available in the SRS document. Consistent. The requirements should fit each other. One section of your requirement document shouldn't conflict with another. The document should be formatted consistently and use the same terminology throughout. No implementation constraints, as SRS document should be detailed enough to finish the job, but shouldn't be overly specific, because that might restrict the development or introduce not needed risks. A lot of development depends on the third-party services that developers have no control over. Accurate uh, goals in requirements uh, document should be precise to avoid confusion. Try to avoid the following loopholes. For instance, uh, the application should load in three seconds if it can be done. Ambiguity. For instance, 
MVP product should be released as quickly as possible. Subjectivity. The UI should be user-friendly. Superlatives. This should be the best application in its class. Comparative. This application should be better than Slack. Okay, so SRS shouldn't contain any implementation details. You should concentrate on functionality and user needs. Please describe what user does in the system. For instance, user should make an order. And of course, include the main terms, transaction, payment, withdrawal, settlement, etc. But try to avoid your SRS shouldn't contain the description of how system works. For instance, user should click the button and see drop down list. And of course, it shouldn't contain technical terms. Please try to avoid uh, using them. For instance, DB record, file, text boxes, buttons, controllers, etc. How to clarify or validate requirements between stakeholders prior to handover to the development team? First of all, uh, there could be next stakeholders from client side, product owner or business owner, product manager. From development team side, there could be business analyst, system analyst, delivery manager, or project manager. And about activities, it could be next. First of all, it's individual review. Created a shared document inside a cloud services, and all parties can review them. Leave the comments for each other and answer questions in the comments. This could be not enough, and then it will be handy to have a meetings or formal methodologies. Depending on what type is comfortable for all parties, it could be just meeting schedule on the time which are comfortable for all stakeholders, or even introduce more formal methodologies with creating tasks, analysis plan, etc. What else? It's a creation of designs, wireframes, mockups. This kind of visualization helps in further estimation and during the business or system analysis phase, help to get, the same, to get to the same page. So it could be really helpful. Brainstorming sessions could be helpful in case of a joint creation of requirement documentation. Surveys and questionnaires could be also an option if there are no fee, free time slots for meetings but this rarely happens. Prototyping depicted in mockups or even small pieces of software in case of a small software could be also an option. After SRS document creation, we need to transfer it to the development team for estimation and further development. So now we will talk about how to do that. First of all, we may set up a grooming meetings with the development team. Depending on team setup, it could be uh, not the whole team in case the team is big, but just a technical team leads, for instance, dev lead, QA lead, etc. Next step is to split all requirements to epics or user stories with detailed description and acceptance criteria which will be verified, first of all, by QAs to make sure development is done correctly. Then put epics or user stories into a development plan to negotiate the time schedule of the development receiving the first results. And of course, from the client side, it's important to have demo meetings to make sure the development team understood and implemented requirements correctly. Together with that, at this stage, some additional requirements could be created because after implementation and visualization, we may realize something changes. Let's talk about how to avoid waste of time in requirement management. Here it depends on the size of the software. 
smaller the software, more time you need to spend for making SRS documentation in comparison with the development time. So if your software is really small, then try to minimize your resources to gather and review requirements for it. So time and money spent for requirements will be lesser than development time. In case software is medium, then it's about finding a balance and keeping resources spent for requirements less than 10% of planet development expenses. If software is large, then just keep an eye that resources spent for requirements do not exceed 5% of all development expenses. And basically, we suggest you to split big software into smaller parts and do everything in phases. This way, composing software requirements and development will go constantly phase by phase. This way, business analysts will be a part of your development team. A benefit of this approach is a very small time to market. Working on requirement specification doesn't stop when development starts. When development has started, there still be a need to clarify some specific details in requirements and even slightly change them. It will be applicable if you have done the analysis and detailed documentation of the whole software and even more needed in case of have a chosen a better approach with split into the phases. Continuation of work on SRS could be done during next activities. First and most important is to have a recurrent demo meetings when the product owner or product manager from the client side could see the next portion of development functionality, accept it or add some comments and corrections. Second one you will uh, likely have is actually communications with project manager when he is making a grooming meeting with the development team before the next development iteration starts. It could be just emailings or any other types of communication. There might be very detailed questions or suggestions on how to implement different requirements. So it will uh, require your review. And the third one is optional and applicable if you have a several stages of development and uh, correspondent requirement specification creation. In this case, business analyst or system analyst on the project with involvement of a project manager can continue working with it. Different kinds of a communication will be needed to drive this work forward. And a little bit about us. Our company is more than 20 years on the market. During this time, we have delivered about 700 products. And for each of it, we had made or business requirement specification with the client or clarified existing requirements documentation. I really hope after this presentation, you will be able to trust us. In case you have got any questions, we will be happy to see them down in the comments below. And if you will need help in composing SRS documentation for your product, our company will be glad to do that for you. And of course, not only that, but also full software development. Thank you and see you soon.